will set it on the cross transports and it doesn't really matter which order you set it in and how you've got it batched because you can select that batch and pull what the next piece of material in, no problem. Once it batches, it'll run up, it'll drag it up to the rollers and run it into the building, into the machine. The machine will grab a hold of it, hit it with a, the, the measuring roller will move in to touch it and it'll start processing that material. And as soon as it's done, if it's long enough to go out the outfeed, it'll go out. If not, operator, me, myself, or anybody that's running it will actually, we'll have a pallet sitting there for smaller stuff like the clips and we'll walk in and pick them up the rest of the material that's, if it's drop material or extra material, finished products that are long enough, they'll go out the outfeed, get it with a forklift and take it back into the shop and start building with it. They'll tell you right here, if I click on it, they'll tell me exactly what piece mark it is, how long it is on the outfeed, which is 25 something foot. Tell me the size, 24, 55. If somebody else is over there running the machine, I could be on a forklift unloading it and they don't have to worry about, hey, what's he doing down there? I can take care of everything here without him worrying about anything. Just the same as loading the machine. I can load the machine while he's running it. He doesn't have to do nothing but sit there and keep it going. You can actually see everything this does, where material is, like finished parts, the material that's in the machine, and then you have, uh, if you have your buffers on there, when you batch them up, it pulls them up and it shows you where they're at. Even as they're moving, it'll show you moving them. If you were doing it all by hand and had uh, have to have a bunch of forklifts moving material around like this here, you can go in and pick up a whole bundle of beams and take it off and just take it and go set it and give it to the guys to build. Or with a lot of this stuff like we're doing, we're actually cutting it and that's it. It doesn't, it goes straight on a semi and gets shipped out to a customer. Should pull the tube inside. I got a six, six quarter tube. Clamps are clamping it down right now. The front, the front center is going to check it now. It's calibrating, it's checking everything out, it's calculating. Now I got to hit the space bar for the robot to go underneath. Just measure material. That way it knows where to probe, it knows exactly where to cut and scribe. If you look on the screen here, it's, it's gonna cut the left hand side. It's gonna put this stencil on it. It's gonna cut it off right here one inch. I got it set to one inch. And it's only got one stencil on there and two cuts, so it really ain't much scribing to be done, except for one tube, I think, on here. Or one angle, probably. I think it's a, no, it's a tube. Uh, waste in between those two products? Uh, uh, the, the curve, I got them. I got them pretty close. I got the. I don't waste much. I got them cut pretty close. You can set it to one inch. You can set it to whatever you want. So if I go to F8, let me see here. I got a cut robot. See, I tell you the minimum size hole, how fast I want to cut it. Additional distance between products. Right now I got zero. So a lot of times I'll cut it right down the middle. Unless I got a weird bevel or something going on, I try to—I don't waste as much as possible. So the integration is doing things um, here that we can't do on our old lines. Our old lines require someone to can use the roller uh, manually, control all the roller conveyors, manually control all the transfers, the lift and carries. So we have—we uh, might have a drill operator that's uh, moving stuff onto his conveyors. He's got to roll it forward. He's got to start the program, and then he's got to. You know, make sure he does the roller conveyors on the outfeed. He has to manually operate the transfers to move material where they need to go. And the process is very long, so we have a cutoff between our, our drill and our coper where no operator can control both. It's just too far away, so an operator has to walk down to another set of controls where they can use one set of roller conveyors to get it on the coper roller conveyors. Then they can transfer it over, and all of this takes time. All of that time is gone. Our operators, all they do is worry about operating their machine. They don't have to worry about moving any of this material. It's all done automatically. So they're just focused on, is my machine running? Is my machine running right? And that's all they have to worry about. And that's what integration is. It's, it's your machines are doing what they need to do. You can't speed them up 
All you can do is slow them down if you're just not paying attention. So again, we just look at how do I keep my machine going? How do I, you know, it's, if I keep it going, I keep material cleared out of the way, it's gonna keep going. Um, and we don't have to spend manpower to do that. If we had the cross transports full all the way to the rollers and you drive in over with a forklift and pick up four or five beams at a time, well, when you go up, the beams are still, you've got that gap. All you have to do is press a button over there. However many pieces of material you take off, you press that button and then hit the reset for the light curtains and it moves all those beams forward. It keeps everything coming to you. There's no going back here and dragging it up. It takes care of all that. It knows exactly where everything is.